Hey, what's up everybody? This is Tammy. Welcome back to our video tutorial series on beginning sprite kit. In this part of the series, you'll set up the playable area for Zombie Conga. In the last video, you learned a technique for creating a universal app that works across all screen sizing. Using that technique, let me show you what the playable area looks like for Zombie Conga. Zombie Conga was designed with a 4 to 3 aspect ratio, which is 2048 by 1536. But you want to support up to a 16 to 9 aspect ratio, which is 1136 by 640. This is what the iPhone 5, 6, and 6 Plus use. Since the scene is configured to use aspect fill, SpriteKit first calculates the largest 16 to 9 rectangle that fits within the 2048 by 1536 space. That works out to be 2048 by 1152. It then centers that rectangle and scales it to fit the actual screen size. For example, the iPhone 6's 1134 by 750 screen, marked here in red, requires scaling by 0.64. This means that on a 16 to 9 device, there are 192 point gaps at the top and the bottom of the scene. These won't be visible. So like I mentioned in the previous video, you simply need a way to identify these areas as your playable area. And then you need to avoid them for critical gameplay, you know, preventing the zombie from moving into those gaps. Let's see how this is done in code. One of the first things we need to do in order to create a playable area is to create a constant that we can use later in code. Now you'll notice that we immediately get a red exclamation point. That's because we haven't set a value for our constant. The reason we can't do that yet is because there's some key information like the size of the scene that we don't know that we need in order to set that value. That means we need to override our init method because then we'll have the information we need in order to set that constant. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now before I explain the code that you've just written, I want to explain something else. Whenever you override the default initializer of a sprite kit node, which is what we're doing here, you must also override the required NS coder initializer. This is used when you're loading a scene from the scene editor. Now we're not using the scene editor, so we can just use the suggested placeholder, which logs an error message. Okay, so back to what we were doing when we overrid the init method. Here we're setting the max aspect ratio to 16 by 9. Then we're setting the playable height and the playable margin, now that we know the height and width of our scene, and then we're using that information to set our playable rect. Then, of course, we're calling the super init on the class. Now you could build and run here, but really you're not going to see any difference. Let's create a function that allows us to draw a red rectangle around our playable area. And we'll scoot down to the bottom of the class for that. Now you may have noticed that on line 127, we're actually using an SK shape node. We're then setting the path, and then setting the color, setting a couple other properties, and then we're adding it to the scene. So remember, it's not just sprites that we can work with. There are so many SK node subclasses that allow us to do many things. Like for example, draw a red box around our playable area. Now that we've got our debug draw playable area function, let's go ahead and call that in did move to view, and then build and run our project to see what everything looks like. Let's first build and run in the iPhone 6. You might just be able to see the red line that's basically around the entire frame of the scene. But let's switch over to the iPad Pro and you can really see the difference. So 
so you can see really well on the iPad Pro where our playable rect has been drawn. And these are that 192 points I was telling you about earlier. So let's put this playable area to use. One of the reasons we want to use this is so our zombie can't move into those areas. So let's create a function called bounds check zombie and we'll use that to basically check the bounds of our zombie and make sure that he stays in that playable area. So you can see here that we're setting our bottom left and our top right using the playable rec constant that we created earlier. We'll use that to determine when the zombie is about to move out of those bounds, and then we'll just simply reset the velocity to move him back in. We'll do that for the X and the Y axis for both the bottom left and the top right. So let's add those lines of code now. We'll first start with the bottom left X position. Then we'll do the top right X position. Moving on to the bottom left Y position. And then finally, the top right Y position. So once again, we're checking our zombies position and we're resetting the velocity based on our bottom left and top right max and min points. Now the final thing we need to do here is call that new function and we'll do it right at the end of the update method. Go ahead and build and run. So let's tap outside the playable area to see what happens. So you can see that the zombie tries to go outside the playable area, but he's unable to do so because of the function that we just wrote that resets his velocity based on our playable area. That's it for this video tutorial. And now we have a challenge waiting for you. Your challenge for this video is to use the math utilities in myutils.swift. This will help tighten up the rest of your code. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.